Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Pleasure to be with you as always. And we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, but one of the subjects I also find really befuddling. It reminds me when I think about fitness, exercise, and food, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, what works, what doesn't work. Like we all know there's a gazillion things out there, hugest industry. It reminds me of a really old Woody Allen movie. Um, I don't remember the name, but he gets transported to the future. And he's growing up in a time when like, you know, you shouldn't eat meat and you shouldn't, there's all these things you shouldn't do and it gets to the future and everybody's eating steak. And it's, he's like befuddled, he can't even understand. And that's kind of what it's like to be alive. Like there's so many different ways and recipes. So I have an expert here today who can clear the air because what if you could actually get your health in order? And what if you're 40, 40 or over? And you actually think, I'm done for, this is it. This is the best it's gonna get. What if it could actually be better? And what if you can meet somebody who's been there, done that, and lives a very healthy, very uh, athletic, slender, healthy lifestyle today? That's Jesse Walker, and that is my guest. <laughs> and I wanna thank Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness for supporting the show and for being our sponsors. If you would like to delve into some more energy healing, go to Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-E-R.com, also Access Consciousness. They've got class products all over the world. They're there for you. So Jesse Walker is an anti-aging warrior, fitness evangelist, transformation coach, and runs Fit Beyond 40 and Fitness Beyond. Jesse Walker is a number one best-selling author and speaker whose passion is sharing fitness and anti-aging strategies in a straightforward way that helps us overcome health and fitness challenges. He's developed simple habits he's going to tell us about for even overworked entrepreneurs who are stretched way too thin between job and family and he teaches us we can implement things to reduce disease, lose weight, and feel great. He's, ha he's giving us all a gift today, which is his book. So if you'd like to download his book as his gift to you, go to fitbeyond40book.com. Jesse, welcome yeah. to Here to Dream. So great to have you here. Awesome. Thanks, Debbie. I'm really excited to be here. It feels like a minute since we connected and I know that I got to hear a little bit of your story and we're going to get there. We're not going to start there because I actually want people just marinate what you look like first. I kind of <laughs> like to reverse engineer, like just enjoy how great he looks and then we're going to get to the real story. We'll pull back the curtain, right? We'll hey, so you and I, before this show started, we were talking, right? You were asking me about my life as an entrepreneur and you were sort of alluding like, Deb, you're pretty damn busy. So, okay, I'm there. I acknowledge busy entrepreneurs. That's part of who you help. Mm -hmm, 100%. How can people like myself and people who are watching who are super crazy busy, how can we get great help? Oh, that's a, that's a really big question. So hopefully we can attack a lot of those things. As they say. Exactly. During, during the course of this. But really the simple answer is just with habits. You know, so the thing is that as busy entrepreneurs, we know that in order to achieve any real goal, any real thing we want to achieve, we have to work hard to do it. And so we spend most of our time working hard to achieve the physical goals as far as making money for our families and reaching our business goals and our, and our dreams and those sort of things. But what we fail to do is we always put our we always put our health on the back burner, right? And then when we want to do something about our health, we we tend as entrepreneurs to look for the easiest, quickest way to get it done. So we'll take pills or we'll get surgery or follow the newest fad diet or whatever it is. And the problem is that none of these things work. What really works is really the same sort of thing that you did with building your business, and that's consistency. Mm -hmm. So what any busy entrepreneur needs to understand is that it's not, it's not a large time commitment. It's more of just a, a habit commitment and the habit commitment can just be small amounts of time. And we'll talk about some ways to do that, 
but really just making some small amounts of time. And once it fits into your lifestyle as a small amount of time that habit is built, then it just continues to grow. Hopefully that makes sense. It does. And so what do you think was the secret for you to have consistency with your um, regime? Because I really think, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I really think it's one of the hardest things. We're surrounded by food all the time. You know, the USA and other countries, everything's a celebration, includes drink and food. And, and it seems like so many things are very restrictive. So people do them for a short period of time and then say, I can't anymore. So what was your secret to really aligning yourself to get yourself to where you are today? All right. Well, that, you bring up a really good point, Debbie, as far as Right now, the way the diet industry sort of teaches us to do things is a very restrictive sort of way. It's like in order to achieve this goal, you need to starve yourself or only eat chicken and broccoli and these sort of things. And personally, that was a roller coaster that I was on. You know, so I spent years chasing the newest diet or doing the new crazy workout program like P90X or whatever it was. You know, and I tried all those things. But again, all those things are, you're unable to do in a consistent basis because you can't eat chicken and broccoli forever. You just can't do it. So for me, I had to start off slow. I had to pick you know, one specific habit. And the one specific habit that I started off with was just 30 minutes of resistance training three times a week. That's where I started. And actually for a lot of people- Do you mean like bands or do you mean actually weights or how did you- I'm sorry, yeah, like, um, like weights. All right, like I would, we had a, I lived in a high rise, um, you know, on, on Miami Beach. And um, we just had a small weight room in the high rise. So I would go down three days a week. I'd spend 30 minutes. And for me, that was doable. A lot of busy entrepreneurs think that I don't have 30 minutes to do it. I mean, how, how am I going to fit that in? So what I have those people do is they have them start off with like a 10 minute a day habit. Just because again, the idea is, the same way you build confidence with doing anything, it's by repetition. You're teaching your subconscious. You're the sort of person that is going to do this on a regular basis. And whether it's 10 minutes or an hour, as far as your mind is concerned, it is now becoming a habit. And so that's how I teach them to start. So pick something that you can do even for 10 minutes. Make sure you do it religiously. You do not miss because once you start to miss and your brain starts going, oh, well, I can put it off. And then you build on it. Okay. I love that. Right. And, and it feels to me when you say that, like, you could feel so successful. Okay, this week, I made it three times to the gym, 30 minutes, I'm doing okay. And you probably get to a certain place within that stasis, and then you're ready for the next piece. And so was the next piece for you something around food? Or was it further around exercise? Um, well, food, um, that's, that's a good point. So I had a lot of health issues. You know, I was, uh, I was pre-diabetic at high blood pressure, chronic inflammation, low testosterone, I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know, was going on. And the, really the only way to attack those things is through nutrition. You know, the training is incredibly important that you have to do that as well, but the nutrition is really what's going to make the ultimate difference for you. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people will spend two hours in the gym and they won't see any results, but it's because they still aren't taking in the right foods to support whatever their goals are. So for me, I had to figure out, well, I've got all these infl inflammatory issues. So I need to figure out what foods that I can eat to help me lessen those. Okay. And then also I've got, you know, the issue where I'm fat, you know, I'm obese. I mean, I, I've got to figure something out there as well. <clears throat> and you were how many pounds? Um, I was 240 pounds at my heaviest, and I'm, I'm 5'10". So right now, to put that in perspective, I'm 185. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. And I have a lot more muscle, so I lost, I lost a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. what, what, was your, what was your choice? What was the avenue for you to lose weight, but also to cut back the inflammation? Like, did you figure out the particular foods that were issues for you, or did you do something a little more generic? Yeah, so there was a book that I read um, it's by Stephen Gundry. It's called um, The Plant Paradox. Mm -hmm. And that book helped me more than any other book um, as far as determining what foods were inflammatory and what were, what were causing me the most issues. So that's a great book for people to check out. Um, and the title's a little bit misleading. 
because when people hear the plant paradox, they think, oh, this is a vegetarian book, you know, this is gonna, but that's not what it is at all. What it is, he's saying that even though we think a lot of these vegetables are healthy for us, they actually are poisoning us. And the idea is that a lot of plants have these things in them called lectins. Right. And what a lectin is, is that uh, the plant, their proteins are the plant's defense against predators, essentially. So, you know, maybe a certain insect will eat this plant and maybe it will kill them or paralyze them or what have you. Well, the lectins in most plants aren't going to kill us or paralyze us right off the bat, but they still cause other issues inside of our bodies that are not exactly good. All right. So, for instance, the most popular lectin is gluten. All right, that gluten is a lectin, for instance, but there are thousands of other ones, right? And he has a whole list of yes foods and no foods. And his yes food list is, is pretty good, but the no food, you get surprised at some of the foods that are on the no food list, all right? That's a surprise, no Yeah, food. Like, like tomatoes, all right? Um, or like, um, like, a lo like any, any, um, like foods with um with seeds in them, for instance, um, you know. So a lot a lot of these foods are like it's it's weird. Um, oats. I'm trying to think of other things that are on there that are just kind of funny that I wasn't expecting. Sorry, my brain's going blank. It's okay. No, I'm fascinated by this. But so here's the thing. I when I when I first did it, I went in head on, forgetting I, I didn't discount anything he said. So I went with I got rid of all the no foods. And it worked. You know, I started losing weight. Of course, I, part of the deal is you're more aware of what's going in your mouth, too. All right. And you're not eating bread because wheat, of course, is a super no no. And so I started losing weight and then I started feeling a whole lot better. Mm. But then what happens is after a couple of years go by, you start going, all right, well, listen, I kind of want to eat tomatoes sometimes. You know, I like, <laughs> you know, so, so, but that's okay. You figure out what foods you still want to let in and you kind of go with it. You don't have to take it that serious, but if you're just starting, I would just go with all, just get rid of all those no foods for a little bit and go for it. And it's a huge difference. Totally. Yeah. I'm thinking of other foods too, like eggplant has those tiny little seeds in it. Um, yeah, that's a, that's really interesting. It's also a nightshade. So I wonder how much has to do with that. But that's I, what, I yeah, that's the nightshades I think you mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of people have, arthritis are advised not to eat nightshade vegetables that it can really bring up the inflammation in the body and yeah. inflammation is like serious i don't know if people realize will you talk to that a little bit so it's not just something like i'm bloated right <laughs> <laughs> serious health shit, right yeah yeah so inflammation is responsible for a lot of the chronic diseases that we suffer you know so um, arthritis, you know, is an inflammatory disease. Um, Crohn's. Um, there's, I mean, I, there's so many. Um, me personally, I had a lot of tendonitis. Mm. Um, so I had a lot of swelling um, in my in my tendons and my joints. And I'm only at the time I'm in my early 40s, you know. Uh, and it's it's kind of silly. I went through that. Uh, I actually uh, ruptured a tendon in my in my thumb, and they had to, you know cut me open and replace it. You know, it's just, just silly stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, inflammation is absolutely no joke. Pretty much any chronic disease you can think of, inflammation is probably linked to it somehow. Yes, cancer as well, I know, is often yep. inflammation. So, yeah, no, it, it's really serious. And um, so l let's go back there. So you say pre-diabetic, obese, all of that. Uh, and people go on his website, by the way, when you see the pictures, you will not believe it. Um, I, I should have, I should maybe do a share because it's really pretty profound what you look like. And I, I might try to do it as we speak and do right. a little bit of a share screen. So talk about, you know, your before and how long the journey was for you to be so solid where you are today. All right. That's, that's a good question. So my journey's really long and it's a roller coaster okay so i started off as one of those chubby kids you know um and you know i mean technically in the 70s i was a fat kid right however back then childhood obesity is nowhere near what it is now all right you know i mean now it's it's really common but back then I, there weren't a whole lot of me so 
growing up, you know, people were, you know, making fun of me and that kind of stuff. And by the time I got into junior high and high school, I was like, all right, I'm going to fix this. And I, I started being athletic and, and these sort of things. And, and, and through my 20s and 30s, I did a pretty good job of keeping the weight down, being like a normal looking dude, you know, keeping some muscle on, that kind of stuff. And it was great. Well, once I reached my 40s, late 30s, really, I really started struggling. And of course, it's because, you know, I was married now and, and I was working all the time, you know, all that stuff that, that people normally use as excuses for <laughs> why they gain weight. And I reached a point where I started to get really sick. And I didn't understand how sick I was. I didn't, I, I, I couldn't quite equate it. And then I don't know if a lot of your, well, I know a lot of your listeners can sort of identify with this is when you see that you're getting sick, you think you have all kinds of time to go ahead and fix it. Mm. You know, so yeah, so I'm a little overweight now. Yeah, so I'm pre-diabetic now. No big deal. I'm just pre-diabetic. You know, I mean, I have a little bit of time before it actually goes to full-blown diabetes. And, and so I was going through that. But I was still trying, meaning I would still try this diet, like I did an HCG diet at one point, or I did P90X at one point. And I would, I would try all these different things to try to fix it, you know, super fast. Well, when I was 43, my daughter was born. And one of those pictures on the side, I think, has me holding my daughter. And at that point... I was like, okay, listen, I really have to do something because this is my only child and I'm 43 now, which makes me an old dad, plenty of 43 year olds. I know I have 20 year old kids at this point, you know, so this is, I, I got to make sure I'm here for her. So I figured, well, when I'm 63, she's only going to be 20. And if I'm going this way right now, where am I going to be in 20 years? You know, what's, what's, what's going to happen to me? And so I love to give you the story that like, all right, the second that happened, Debbie, I knew what I was going to do. And I turned my health around instantly. That is not what happened. Unfortunately, what happened is I spent the next couple of years still struggling, trying to figure it out. Mm. So when you ask how long my journey was, my daughter is now, she's five. She'll be six in September. I spent another three years really just figuring out what I needed to do before I finally hit on, you know, really what my issue was. And my issue was that I wasn't aware enough about what was, and I, actually I told you, kind of showed me on my Gundry thing, but my issue was I wasn't aware enough about the things that were going into my mouth and I wasn't consistent enough on my exercise. Not that it needed to be this extreme P90X stuff because it doesn't. It just needs to be something simple that you can do consistently because the nutrition is ultimately what matters so long as you are still doing training. God, thank you so much. I, I've gotten into this with people, by the way. Uh, just that one piece about food versus movement. And mm -hmm. there's so many people who have the idea that, you know, every day and, you know, you better climb mountains and do this and that. And like, look, nothing against that. I hike every weekend. I, I do a lot of physical things. Right. And yes, I do it for my health, but honestly, I also have so much energy that if I didn't do movement, I, it's critical to my personality, right? Mm -hmm. However, I'm very clear because I see it in my body, the difference between when I shift my food, what's mm -hmm. possible, to when I'm eating the way I want to eat and I could exercise my tush off <laughs> and I'll still have a tush, you know? <laughs> um, right. This is so important for people to hear what you're saying, that you can do consistent exercise, but not at a cray cray level and still keep your food in a really healthy zone. And that's, what's going to create the impact. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And a lot of people you know, to your point, I get people all the time that will tell me, Jesse, look, I eat healthy all the time and I walk, right? How come I can't lose weight? Mm. And, you know, this, this question kind of eats me up a little bit because there's a difference between eating healthy and energy balance. You know, so for instance, I can go have a peanut butter, spinach, and avocado smoothie, which may be delicious and it may be extremely healthy, but 
it might also have 1500 calories in it. And then if I add all the other stuff I ate during the course of the day, which was a nice healthy salad with maybe some chicken and avocados and some eggs on it with, you know, if I add all that stuff up during the day, I ate super healthy. I mean, I was a healthy eater, but I ate 3000 calories and I only burned 1500. So regardless of how healthy you are eating, your energy balance is still critical. And so what you said earlier about, well, you know, I hike and I do all these things because I have so much energy. That is awesome because there are a couple of main reasons why we start to get fatter as we get older. And one of the main ones is that our activity levels go down, which I'm sure you know. So uh, if you are doing activity like that every single day, then that really helps you. But then, of course, the other thing is muscle mass. And so that's why I say no matter what you do, the nutrition is super important, but the consistency with training is as well because the less muscle mass you have, the lower your metabolism is. Right. Okay. I, I so get this. And thank you so much, by the way, for sharing the truth. I mm -hmm. love that you were able to say, you know, you, you'd hope that it had a happy ending, that I took <laughs> this on and, you know, I was there, but in fact, you struggled, which yeah. I think is the norm. Although right. most people stay in the struggle, you finally found your way out. So you must have had some real strong commitment and drive to get to the other side of this. 100%. Yeah. My, my, why, was, my why was clear. Uh, and here's the thing. So I've seen several people, and I've had to do this myself, thank goodness, but I've seen several people become caregivers for their elderly parents. Okay. And since I'm already an older father, the last thing I want is for my 20 year old daughter to have to become a caregiver for me for something that I could have prevented. Wow. If I get hit by a car, that's one thing, you know, but if it's just because I couldn't stop going to Cracker Barrel every Tuesday, <laughs> that's a whole other thing, right? It's a whole other issue. So being honest with myself, I never want to have to put her through anything like that if it's something I can prevent. And plus, I want to be able to travel with her. You know, how many times do you say, hey, listen, we're going to take a family trip. Let's, it would be great if grandma or grandpa could come, but you know what? They really can't. They're in a wheelchair now or, you know, they're on a walker so they can't walk around Disney World with us or, I mean, they, they, they can't do it. I don't want to be the older person that can't. Wow. Damn, that's a good why. Thank you, yeah. I hope a lot of people just had a huge aha. I know, like, I got goosies while you were saying that. I'm, a, I'm about to be a caretaker of a mother who, although did yoga and was a vegetarian and blah, 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 her whole life, there's mm -hmm. other things she did not do well. And so she suffers right now physically, and it is so scary, the whole thought of where this is headed, without yeah. a doubt. And the fact that we, it's yet again, we choose, we decide, right? right? It impacts our whole life and other people's lives. So that is so powerful. So when you share, Jesse, that that's your why, have you always done this? Have you always been a, a coach, a fitness guy, an expert in health? Or were you doing something else before your transformation occurred? Yeah, that's an excellent question. No, I wasn't. So I'm not one of those people that's, been healthy my whole life and I'm just saying yeah it's easy you know I did it you do it you know and I, I, I get it you know I see a lot of these kids are you know 25 years old and they've always been shredded and they're just telling us you know how easy it is to do it you know and they never had a real job right um, yeah that's not me so my my career has been primarily in automotive I was a, a digital marketing director for automotive dealer groups and um, you know I just did their marketing and advertising and help run the stores and, and that and the problem is that in that environment, automotive, people in the automotive industry tend to work a lot of hours. I'm not saying people don't work a lot of hours in other industries, but in automotive, it is pretty standard. And so, you know, working 50 to 60 hours in a week is pretty normal here. Uh, and in South, in Florida, unfortunately, we're one of the states where dealerships are open on Sundays. A lot of states, which I don't even think in California, I think they're closed on Sundays. They are. Um, but here in South Florida, we're open seven days a week. Mm. So you may work every single day for a month. You know, it just sort of depends. And we always eat really, really crappy food. And, uh, you know, again, always have donuts there. Oh, yeah. And it's not always our fault because, especially me, I'm in marketing. 
um, we have vendors that come through and they want to be nice, you know, so they bring, they bring donuts and all kinds of crap and bagels and, you know, just whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then we have cafes there and everybody's ordering barbecue. I love barbecue. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> I'll do barbecue with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, me some barbecue. <laughs> wow. Very interesting. So have you completely left the auto industry? Now that yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, this is my passion. It's, you know, it, it's, it's a different deal. So when I was making, you know, the transformation, you know, what would happen is people would constantly walk up to me and they still do. Jesse, what are you doing? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And I really enjoy sharing that information with people. The thing that made me a little sad was that I, I'm not even gonna say nine times out of ten because it's closer to ten times out of ten. When people ask me what I did, most of them won't do it, mm -hmm. and that and that was an epiphany for me. So I was like, okay, well, maybe the issue is that they need more support to actually get it done. Yeah, you know. So so that's why now I'm 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 a, I'm a coach. You know, I provide the support because I can tell you to do something. I can tell you why it works, but who here doesn't know if you exercise and eat better, you're going to be in better shape? Who here doesn't know that? You know, everybody's kind of has that, but really the, the, the details as to how, and then the support to make sure you get it done. And that's really where, where I'm showing you now. So does somebody need to be in Florida to work with you? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, I do, I do coaching for people all over the country. Haven't had anybody internationally yet, but I'm sure that I will. But, uh, but yeah, you can be anywhere in the world and I'm able to serve you. And the way it works is we do 100% customized nutrition, 100% customized training. But the way that I look at lifelong health is it isn't just the nutrition and training. In order for you to succeed, I look at it like a table. In order for you to succeed, there's like four legs. You've got the nutrition, the training, but you also have mindset and habits. So part of the training and coaching is centered around fixing your mindset or building your mindset to the proper mindset and then creating some habits for you. Weigh in on wine and vodka. I won't go into a lot of alcohols because I get it, but <laughs> vodka because it's so little carb impact and uh -huh. wine because it's goddamn delicious. So <laughs> where do you stand on that? So I like, I like to imbibe myself. Um, I think that if you had to choose between the two, you would go with the clear. You would go with the vodka um, or tequila. That's, that's where you would go. You're going to have lower calories for the same, let's say, effect. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're you're, you're going to be a little better off that way because wine tends to have a few more calories, you know, in the glass. However, none of that really matters as long as you're imbalanced. You know, so, you know, for instance, um, uh, this week I had, cause it was my birthday Saturday. So we went out to a yard table and I had ribs and I had chicken and waffles and I had a couple of drinks and everything's all good. You know, it, it, it doesn't really matter so long as you've figured out what your body actually needs and you, you do what it needs. Cool. And when you do have a vodka or a tequila drink, what do you mix it with? I am assuming you don't have it straight. Um, so normally, okay, that's, that's an excellent question. So if I'm out at a restaurant and I want to try one of the rest, one of the drinks on the menu, mm -hmm. usually those drinks have a tremendous amount of sugar in them. Yeah. And I'll do one of two things. Usually it is the latter. And what I'll usually do, um, Usually what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, I've already had a lot of shit, a lot of bad stuff today. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so maybe what I'll do is I'm not going to have this drink normally. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them to give it to me, no sugar. And I'll go like that. All right. That's what I will normally do. But sometimes I'll let them have the, I'll have the sugar. Yeah. So like there's something here that I order called a skinny girl margarita. Mm -hmm. And so when they make the margarita, obviously tequila, but instead of that terrible mix that is so sugar laden, they actually have a mix that it's probably a, I don't know what the sweetening is, but it's like almost no impact. And yeah. you can see it now in the stores and the liquor stores and stuff. So I'll do that or um, 
you know, I try to do something with like really light grapefruit juice and a vodka because I don't like straight alcohol. But I'm just wondering if you have and, I'm, and tonic and all that or. or yeah. Well, tonic's got sugar. And I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question right. You're right. So I drink normally tequila straight. And if I want any flavor at all, I'll have a splash of pineapple. And you have to watch the bartender because what they'll do is they'll try to pour some pineapple in there. But you really just want a splash. It just kind of adds a little flavor to it. Uh, without adding a whole lot of calories and just be careful with diet things like the skinny girl i'm not sure what it has in it but see if it has aspartame or sucralose in it okay so for the long term and i just I'm, I'm, i know the diet industry is going to hate me for this but for the long term i mean these artificial sweeteners are killing us yeah uh, and so if you can you avoid poisoning your body with the artificial sweeteners, because we're, we're getting all this stuff in our bodies just from random things anyway. Why add to it? You know, for instance, one of um, a strategy I teach a lot of people is intermittent fasting. Right. And people always ask me, well, during intermittent fasting, can I drink Diet Cokes? Well, <laughs> weight loss, you can, right? You know, I mean, technically, you know, uh, and, and, it's, and it's not going to change anything. However, while you're doing that 16 hour period or whatever it is, and you're cleansing with water and all that stuff and your body's going, Oh, this is great. Now you're going to poison it, you know, with a whole bunch of aspartame and sucralose. It just seems kind of silly, but you know, that's, that's the way I look at it. <laughs> oh my God. Jesse, has anybody ever told you that you sound like Tony Robbins? <laughs> no, but I get it. Cause my voice is kind of scratchy. <laughs> that's funny. You really do actually. Uh, you got a whole thing going on there. That's a good man. <laughs> I got to get a helicopter. All right. Right. He's also a Floridian, so not, not too far from you. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a very quick break, and you are listening to Dare to Dream Radio and Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, and you can donate. I thank you in advance. You can donate to the show. We interview very successful, bold, fascinating leaders, cutting edge people who have created major goals. And what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? What would you do if you knew at the end of the day you could feel completely free and bold? That's where I want to take you. That's why Dare to Dream was created, because you can dream and create that dream, that one. So be part of the Dare to Dream podcast. Every week I bring you the most exquisite people who teach us things that we wouldn't know otherwise and people you probably might end up working with. You have a big purpose to fulfill. So at patreon.com slash dare to dream, you can support the show. It takes a lot to keep this mama engine going and bring you the people we do and all the business aspects. We want to be sustainable. We want to give you the best quality. And for a dollar, a cup of coffee, whatever you want to donate, we are grateful. The show will always be free to you. And if you're ready to give, and keep us going after 12 years, we're grateful. It's patreon.com slash dare to dream. If you're tuning in after we've started, Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, and I'm interviewing Jesse Walker, and his website is fitbeyond40.live. And for those of you who are actually watching the video, as opposed to listening to the podcast, you can go to the video. It's youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, because I showed some pictures, some before pictures of Jesse while he was telling his story. So, hmm, I, I guess I want to know some favorite fitness hacks. Okay. You talked about the three times a week. There's this saying, which is, it hurts now, but one day soon, it will be your warm up. Yep, it's exactly true. It's exactly it. So, with that, with the three times a week, it's a compound effect sort of thing. Um, and you know, the compound effect is basically just doing small things, how they add up over time to a really big result. And so, a lot of times, I'll talk to people and I'll say, okay, well, imagine if you only spend 30 minutes a day, three times a week for the next month, just exercising 30 minutes a day. So there's 168 hours in the week. 
30 minutes a day, three times a week is 90 minutes. It's an hour and a half out of 168 hours. We all can find that. So if we start there in a month, where are you going to be? Well, probably not a whole lot different, but you'll feel better and you've built some habits. In 20 years, where will you be? Where will you be? You'll be a completely different person. And if you're an older person, it means it's the difference between being able to stand up and sit down on your own. That's the benefit of the compound effect of that. But then I also tell them, what's the compound effect of you doing nothing at this point? Mm. And, and then imagine what you're going to be like in 20 years. So I know it wasn't the question, it was fitness hacks. But when you said that, that's what it made me think of. So my favorite fitness hack for entrepreneurs is the Pomodoro technique. So the Pomodoro technique, it's really a productivity hack. And what it is, it's um, Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. All right. And it was, the, it was made up by some Italian guy. I don't remember what his name is. All right. But bottom line is you set a timer for 25 minutes. All right. So you sit down, you set a timer for 25 minutes, you turn off everything, your cell phone, everything. And all you do is focus on one task for 25 minutes. Right. At the end of that 25 minutes, you take a five minute break. So you do the math. That's two five minute breaks every single hour. Now, during that five minute break, you can do whatever you want. You can meditate. You can get a glass of water, you can use the bathroom, whatever it is. But for a fitness hack, you take those five minutes and you do something fitness-like. Hmm. So now you have this timer that goes off. 25 minutes has gone by, you were super focused, you got a bunch of stuff done. Now you got five minutes, you get up, and if you're in a place that has stairs, you go spend five minutes going up and down the stairs. You just amped your activity for that day and you really spent no time doing it. Because who doesn't have five minutes? Yeah. Right? Or you can stand at your desk and do chair squats. You know, basically, so you just stand up and down for a little bit. Or you can do push-ups. Or you can go take a nice, re refreshing walk around the block. I mean, there are so many things that you can do. Um, one thing I preach is drinking a lot of water. Drinking way more water than you need, which I see you are. You're, you're on it, right? <laughs> you're on it. But yeah, drinking a lot of water. So... Instead of keeping a big jug of water at your desk, like I see a lot of people do, just have a glass, you know, just like this. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as it's done or at the end of your Pomodoro, get up, go get another glass, and that's movement. And then you're, you're drinking more water. There's a lot of ways you can take that Pomodoro hack and use it to give yourself better fitness without taking time out of your schedule. And how many five minute increments in general, do you think a person might do during a day? So I, I don't expect anybody to do it for every five minutes they have in the eight hours, which would be 16, you know, but if you can do it 10 times out of that period of time, that's a good job. Yeah. If you can do it the whole 16, that's a great job too. But think about it, if you do it just 10 times, that's 50 minutes, 50 minutes of activity that you would not have had. And that's and, on top of your regular exercise? Yes. Yeah, this is completely separate. This is just about increasing the amount of activity that we have during the course of our day. Wow. Very cool. I like that. I can easily do that. Or turn on music and just dance around. I don't do enough of that. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to exercise each time. You can meditate, as I mentioned. Just something. But what a lot of people are afraid of, well, wait a minute, if I do that, I'm going to be less productive because I took all this time out. But it has been shown over and over and over again, taking regular breaks will make you more productive. Over and over. So we got to let that go. I think that is hashtag genius hack. Thank you. Because I really do. I'm a firm believer in the magic of contrary action. The mind says, I must do this. I must get ahead. Look at my, I know it. I know it intimately. I have a to-do list and I got to crank it out. And oh God, the day's over and I never got to finish everything. And another day like this, it's the worst. Mm -hmm. But literally doing what you're describing, which I love, because I know the meditation. I know walking my dog around the block, but you're taking it to another level. And I'm going to really incorporate this. The idea of literally extricating oneself from a grind and doing something else. I really think the universe kind of comes in on wings. You know, they're like a 401k plan and like, <laughs> you're taking a break and boom, yep. you know, here, let, let's move this project along while you're over there doing squats or, 
it's just amazing what's possible. And I don't know what happens in our psyche mm -hmm. when we pull away from, you know, getting so myopic. But I really feel that's another component that we pull ourselves away from that and something different energetically can be created from us. So five minute Pomodoro people. <laughs> that's it. Italian tomato breaks, but don't <laughs> eat the tomatoes because of the seeds. <laughs> Just like that's it. tomato breaks. You can call it that. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. So I would love to hear about one of your clients and some kind of success that they had. Um, there's something you say, which is that uh, your platform is about transformation, right? And not just physical transformation, but an actual change in identity. And right. I find that very fascinating. So if we could change our body, if we could even change our identity, I'm not really clear what that means, but I know I'm compelled about it. Right. So what, is, what does that transformation mean? And can you illustrate that through somebody that you've worked with? Yeah, absolutely. It's the biggest thing that I see is confidence. Because especially when you're obese, if, if you've experienced it, you know, the, your, your movement is restricted, you feel uncomfortable, you feel uncomfortable around other people, you feel uncomfortable with the way people are looking at you, right? Um, you feel uncomfortable every time you put food in your mouth and people are around you looking at you, right? So all this is kind of weighing on you besides all the health issues and all that stuff. And then if you're one of those people like me that thought ahead, about what it can mean to my family in the future, you also got that guilt, you know, maybe along. Mm -hmm. And so um, this particular person, same sort of thing, very, very obese, you know, over 300 pounds, and very self-conscious, because when people would look at her, then she would, you know, feel like she was being judged, all right? And then, of course, also the way she was with her spouse, her spouse was overweight as well, but you know, sometimes women tend to be more self-conscious about their weight than men do. So you can imagine how that sort of affects her. And of course, in the bedroom, the whole deal. So the difference is that once you get a hold of it, first you get the confidence that I am now in control. All right. And that's the first part. I'm now in control. Because a lot of us, we let ourselves get run by the excuses. And then the excuses, unfortunately, make us feel helpless. You mm -hmm. know, the reason I'm like this is, I mean, obviously I've got, and she has kids, you know, I'm really busy. I've got my kids and then I've got my job and I have all these things. I just don't really have the time to, to take care of myself. But when, when you're like that, then you don't have any power. You don't have any power. You have to accept the responsibility that if you make it a priority, you have the time. So once she was able to do that, once she was able to become aware of the foods that were going in her mouth, it's a complete transformation. She's a completely different person, you know, and that's, that's really the key. Confidence is up there, smiling all the time, and she can eat what she wants in front of people within reason, you know, within reason. You know, she's not eating full red velvet cakes every day, but within reason. <laughs> and did her man come along when he saw what she was doing? You know, no, um, and that's a, a good point. Um, so, <clears throat> It's really important, I think, for a spouse to support the other one when you're making the transition. And a lot of times, the spouses don't. The spouses want to keep smoking. The spouses want to keep eating the same crap. They don't want to go to the gym. Luckily, she had me as a coach, and I was her support, regardless of what he was doing. So that really helps. But for anybody that wants to get into shape at home, I know it is difficult if your spouse does not support you. So find somebody that does. You know, that's all I can say. Or just become really strong and be able to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that can make a huge difference to really have that kind of grit. Yeah. But before, we're going to come back in a minute here and talk about a couple of steps that people can use that Jesse recommends for lifelong health and vitality. You can subscribe to this show. Go to, gosh, it's like it's all changing. I can't say iTunes anymore because iTunes is going away. It's like, wow. But you can go to Spreaker. You can go to YouTube. 
You can go to, my goodness, literally Google Debbie Dashinger, comma, Dare to Dream. You may already even be on my website as a subscriber. There's so many places and spaces that y'all can listen to the show and leave a five-star review because every time you do that, somebody who really wants to engage in this conversation can find the show based on your review. And I have an exclusive just for Dare to Dream listeners only. If you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner and you would love to have a platform to make some money, Thinkific is the place. It is so unique. And this is where you can create, market, and sell your own online courses. It's powerful. It's an all-in-one platform. The biggest companies and entrepreneurs are using it today. And it's so easy to share your knowledge and grow your audience, scale your business. It doesn't matter if you have 10 students or 10 million students. Think if it gives the easiest technology and the best support in the business. They have put together a special just for Dare to Dream listeners. And when you go to thnk.cc slash deb, D-E-B, you will get three months of their business platform for free. Yes, you heard me right. It's only for you guys. Thinkific business plan, Dare to Dream. And you can set up your own online course. Just follow the link to the exclusive deal. It's thnk.cc slash deb. I'm interviewing Jesse Walker, fitbeyond40.life is his website. And uh, Jesse, I'm curious, what allowed you through the journey that you've been on to actually move beyond expectations or setbacks and actually carve out the path that you're living today? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, ultimately, it was... I'm, I'm sorry, I may have to edit this. I hear all the kids singing in the background. Can okay. you hear that? No editing. We're, re we're live, baby. So <laughs> those, those are the kids that you got all fit for. So we're going to celebrate that they're there and shouting and happy and playing. <laughs> sorry, just distracted me. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have to tell them. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to read something while Jesse is doing his thing. And of course, you can see behind him on 40, this beautiful green background. And here's the saying. The saying is, it this is Nike, by the way. It takes four weeks for you to not notice your body changing. Eight weeks for your friends and 12 weeks for the rest of the world. Give it 12 weeks, don't quit. I love that Nike poster. So. Sorry about that. It's okay, you were saying that Whenever you've had a setback or expectations, how, what was it that allowed you to keep really committed to yourself and have fortitude? Like, no, I'm doing this. This is where I'm heading. Yeah, ultimately, it's, it's the why. And every client I work with, we dig deep to figure out what their why is. Because if they aren't clear on what that why is, they're just not, they're just not going to stay. Huh. So for me, you know, my why was super clear. And then... And this is a hack that I was going to share with everybody with the entrepreneurs. Most of the strategies that I come up with are strategies that give me more time in addition to whatever the health benefits are. All right. So for me, I wanted to eliminate my excuse that I don't have a lot of time. All right. Because we all do. If we're entrepreneurs, we all have the excuse. I just don't have enough time. So instead of just, instead of just, beating my head against the wall trying to beat the time thing I came up with ways that would give me more time so for instance intermittent fasting is a strategy that I used that really helped me and I still use it and the reason intermittent fasting is such a blessing for entrepreneurs is it actually gives us more time because if we are not preparing meals throughout the day and eating meals throughout the day instead our meal eating window is shortened then the rest of the time we're not going to find food. You know, we would get, I would get to the dealership at let's say seven thirty, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whenever I got there, it's been on the day. But the first thing I would do is go to the cafe and grab some food. I would waste the first 30, 40 minutes while I'm there 
going to get food, talking to people, eating the whole thing. It's a waste of time. So I take that whole part out of the equation with intermittent fasting. Another thing that, um, that I do is I have a morning ritual, and this is something that everybody should have. And the morning ritual itself needs to be something that helps you save time. So you cram a lot of important stuff into that morning ritual, like already have your glass of water right there by the bed. By the bed. A lot of people hit the snooze button right away. I have this ritual where the second the alarm goes off, I get up and then I feel grateful immediately. Mm. Because why? Because a snooze button on an apple is nine minutes, I think. You do that twice, you waste 18 minutes. So again, another way to find more time in the day to exercise. That's, that's the way I do everything. So that's what helped me. I always find hacks that will give me more time to do the things that are important to my body. Nice. Uh, do you have like a blog with more hacks on your website or is there a place where, I guess your book, does your book have a lot of those? Um, my book has some of them. I wrote the book a while back. Um, it's more about my journey. And, uh, and so they'll, it's, it's funny. People will enjoy it. It's, 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 it's a good time. The hacks and stuff. So I have a YouTube channel. Oh, cool. And they can go to the YouTube channel and see some of my videos. And also on my Facebook, if they go to Facebook, it's you fit beyond 40. Um, they can visit that and they'll see me post things about my hacks as well. And your YouTube channel is what? It's fit beyond 40. Okay. Good branding. <laughs> yeah, well, fit All the way across. Say yeah, that, my yeah. coaching fitness beyond coaching. It all fits. <laughs> Jesse, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams or goals? That's an excellent question. So I'm really passionate about this coaching thing. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to help as many people as I possibly can doing it. You know, I, a lot of people have this, like, I want to help 1 million people. I don't even know if I can quantify helping 1 million people. I don't, I don't know about that. What I do know is I want to have, I, I want to see, let's make it a thousand people smile at me because I was able to help them. That's really more what I want. I do a lot of these, uh, I do a lot of these coachings on Facebook, you know, where I'll have a few hundred people in the group and I'll just sort of coach. And I get more pleasure out of that mm -hmm. off times than my one-on-one -on -one coaching stuff because these people aren't expecting a whole lot. They don't know me. You know, they aren't expecting a whole lot. They just start, okay, well, this guy's got some stuff. But then after they go through the, little, the, the coaching, they're just so excited and they're, they're writing me for after going, I can't believe you helped me. And that's, that's what I like. So as so long as I can keep that part growing, that's amazing. And I, th I think everybody, everybody can be a little bit better. They just need the support. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. It's been great to have you. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. I end today's show with this quote, which is, I will not let age change me. I will change the way I age. Next up on Dare to Dream Radio, I'm featuring Coach Melanie Benson, who's going to walk us through big goals, clearing overwhelm, and creating money. Again, subscribe to this conversation. It's number one transformation conversation on podcasts. And I'm so grateful that you joined us today on Dare to Dream. Always post your comments and we, we read them all. We'll get back to you. Create your dreams and live big and bold.